let's get started here. So you want to learn about automation control panels, industrial control panels, the wiring, the, the design, and everything that goes in them. I see on the uh, internet, YouTube, and so on and so forth that a lot of people go in for the showing of all the uh, different symbols and stuff. And we're going to do all that, but I can't do it in a um, just an overview. So we're going to have to do this kind of like a page by page. And I'm hoping that's going to be okay with you. If starting out with this overview, if you have questions, put them down in the comments. And that way, as I start going through these pages and doing individual videos on each page to get into more detail, then maybe I can answer some of your questions while I'm in there. So with that, let's go ahead and get started here. And I'm going to get this out of the way over here so we got a little bit larger screen. And I've got this one down. So I'm using SkyCAD and uh, they're skycad.ca. They have, um, they'll actually let you download the standard software for free. So if you want to go check them out, I'll put the uh, link down in the description and you can start playing around with this a little bit yourself, start coming up with some questions and we can go into details later on. But again, this is going to be a quick one. The last video I did, I barely got to page five and I was already at 20 minutes. So I think I need to cut it down quite a bit. And I just want to be real with you guys here. I don't want to give you a bunch of fluff and blow smoke up your ass and tell you that I'm an expert because I'm not. I'm pretty freaking good about what I do, but when it comes to uh, learning how to read these wiring diagrams, you really, really need to learn every single piece and part about it. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. And what I mean by that is you've got um, different numberings and different systems and such that uh, leads you to different pages. And we'll get into that in a minute. So, so let's get started here. Go with the table of contents. You're going to have this in your paper pages. The difference between software and the uh, the actual paper pages, obviously, is that you have to thumb through all that stuff and try and find each one. So I kind of highly suggest that if you do have paper pages and you are trying to find um, certain pages for your terminal strips, your parts list, your BOM, etc., that you get out a highlight and highlight the numbers of the pages for. for quick reference because there's nothing worse than having to flip back through 35 pages of, uh, of stuff. This one's only got 18 in it right now. Let's move on to the panel layout. In the panel layout here, obviously I've got the front of my enclosure. Down here you've got your main breaker coming in. Over on this end over here on this side is the actual inside. You've got all your pieces and parts. You've got a back plate, you got wireways, DIN rail, PLC, fuse blocks, terminal blocks, uh, motor protection circuit breakers, high voltage transformer, or I should say AC transformer. Down here you have a DC transformer, more fuse blocks, VFD, soft starter. You've got your main circuit breaker. You've got a terminal distribution block and a heck of a lot more terminals. Going into single line diagram, you're going to see this on a lot of your uh, paper pages as well. Just kind of gives you a one line of where everything is located and the flow of power, what the devices it goes through, and devices components. Uh, you're not going to see all the, the different switches and everything on your one line. You're going to see that next. Or I should say up in some future pages here. Let's go into this one. This is our power coming in. They do have the three phase of the neutral. You got your main circuit breaker there. Look down here. Gives you the rating of the circuit breaker. These are rung numbers. Your rung numbers are going to be back over here. Kind of gives you a location of where everything is at in the future. If you take a look at, here's that distri power distribution block right there that I showed you earlier. Look at these, this is your actual connection points. 
and the dots, these are line jumpers. You got a fuse block, you've got a surge protector in this one, you got your amp meters, which I showed you on the very front panel. Go back and look at some of this stuff on your own if you want. Um, then down here is, this, uh, is your rung numbers. We'll tell you where your power is coming from and going to. Take this back out. And then let's go over to your mains. Here's our mains within the panel itself. This was the rung numbers on the other side was at 438. The rung numbers on this side is 500, which I just showed you back there. Uh, protection circuit breaker. You've got a contactor. You've got overloads. You've got wire numbers and wire locations and normally open and normally closed. This particular um, wiring right here is uh, a cable going out to one of your gate motors. Generally, these lines right in through here are going to be dotted, letting you know that it is outside the cabinet and external wiring. Here you've got pin blocks, terminal blocks, this type of cable. You can go out and actually search, see what kind of, this, of uh, cable that you're actually using in here. You're going to find that in your paper pages, and that's down back over here a little ways. Ground bars, soft starter, uh, VFD, your motor protections, and you've got pressure switch, fuse, more fuses. Back over here, this is landing over at your terminal block, and then um, all this nomenclature in here tells you where you're landing with the terminal block, what location on the terminal blocks. Same thing down here, you got a bridge going in. It, it shows you all the different rung numbers so that you can cross-reference that on another page. So it's called cross-referencing. Here I got my, uh, I'm sorry, I called that a, a pressure switch, I was wrong. That's uh, actually the 24 volt DC transformer. And here's a 24 to 120 volt AC transformer. And that's all gonna control your coils and contactors and such. Here you get your different switches, on off autos, and uh, you got your starts, stops, you get solenoids, coils, there's that pressure switch I was talking about earlier. More terminal blocks, tells you where to land, giving you the colors there. And um, let's see, we got another normally closed, normally open. These are all your lights. They were on the, uh, the front cover of that uh, exterior of the control cabinet. Another light, coils, they are controls basically going through the same thing. Let me show you one thing here. This is kind of interesting to see when you're reading these and taking a look at them. Um, this indicator here, the way it's going off to the right, is letting us know that we're going to have two wires landed under terminal one on the stop. And this one here, we're going to have two wires landing under 14 on the, on the, um, uh, on off auto. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, you're not taking this from here over to your start button. And this is important mainly because if you don't wire it this way, sure, you can go ahead and land this on number three over there. It's still going to work. But the problem being is if somebody looks at this schematic and they start going and they look in for the, uh, the start button, they look at the start button and they only see one wire coming there and coming there, they're gonna know they're on the right page, or I should say on the right um, right terminal. If they see the two over here, then they'll know this is exactly the way it's wired. Not that you can't figure it out, but it can get confusing if you deviate from the way it's drawn on these plans. Presser control, same situation, more pieces and parts. Over here, you've got your, um, this is giving me the soft starter is what that one was and you can find all this on the paper pages by just going back and looking at your parts again we're going to find that down here 
All right, let's see. We're on eight. Let's go down to nine. The PLC. Basically, that's what your PLC is going to, you know, pretty much look like. In one of my other videos, I mentioned getting on the internet and just start punching in PLCs and start seeing different, um, different brands and different styles of them. Because although they function the same, they're designed a little bit different as far as appearance. And that could get a little confusing at times. So you go through all the wiring diagrams of, uh, you know, the PLC at this point. Terminal strips. You've got all the different terminal strips in here. Tells you where to and from. Where to and from. This is generally on the right side here it is going out to your field. Letting you know where you're going at out there. Uh, sometimes it does go within um, within the cabinet itself. And up here, this particular one, you're paying attention to the 24 volt DC. What's on that terminal block? These are called end stops. They hold all this together. This happens to be when you see these stacked up like this. This is a stacked terminal block. Same thing down here. We're on uh, 24 volt AC on this one. Let's see what was that other one was 24 volt DC. And this one is 24 volt AC. Same thing, man. It's just it it goes and it, it tells you where it's located at and where it goes to, what terminal board it goes to, what terminal block. So we got more more strips here. This one has a breakdown of uh, the exterior side locations of it. Uh, net numbers, we'll get into that later on. Uh, you got a ground wire. It's got part numbers and manufacturers. I see that sometimes in some of the drawings that I have, but a lot of times I really don't get this breakdown as an installer, maybe as a designer um, or a panel builder, but not necessarily as an installer out in the field. And there's a big difference between a designer and a um, field installer and uh, a panel builder you know it's what I mean by that is generally when you go and you start wiring up pieces of equipment off of this control panel this is the, all this stuff is already wired on the inside all you're looking for is the uh, the load side of everything now we're back into more terminal blocks more information down here telling your voltages, your wires, your pluses, uh, 24 volt DC, 24 volt AC. And uh, that basically will give you everything that you need to know in here. It's you have to connect the dots and find out what page everything is on. So let's go to a parts list here parts list here, some of the bigger stuff, the uh, circuit breakers, uh, back plates, uh, let's see what else we got in here, your motors, ground bars, distribution block. It gives you all this information and um, not necessarily for for the field installer, not for the electrician hooking up the uh, machine or the tooling, uh, but for the uh, designer and the panel builder. More parts list, there's just you know hundreds of parts in there here's a bill of materials you can go through this and probably not going to see this in your in your field drawings but uh, the wire list is going to be important you'll always have a wire list within your drawings and within that um, you know it's going to give you your side this is all in metric here but uh, Google's your best friend on that. You want to know what size these wires are. I think this is a 16 uh, without looking it up off the top of my head. Uh, those are all pretty much 16s going through there. Let's look at these wire sizes here. Same thing, 16s. And then it gives you all your locations of your drives and starters and such. Terminal boards, where it lands, side one, side A, side B. Another wire list. A lot of wireless and here's your in out of your digital inputs and your analog you'll have all of that within your paper pages um, most of the time it's uh, important 
on our end, I, when I say our end, I'm kind of talking as an installer here because that's mostly what I've done. We've got uh, different types of shielded, unshielded, and then like on shielded, you're only supposed to land the ground on one end and generally that one end is at the device. Uh, there's more to it than that, but um, here's more of your rung numbers. So let me go back to the panel layout here and I just want to show you that um, what I said in a previous video about getting to know what all of this stuff is, I have the option on the computer program to right click on these and you know explore it or navigate to it or, or move it from point A to point B. You don't necessarily have that um, you know, as you're following along, so you want to know what an amp meter looks like. This is probably one of whatever a thousand of them. I'm not real sure. Um, you get your manual on off start. What, what do those actually look like? That's going to be a huge, huge thing for you to succeed in making, um, making progress in industrial and automation control panels is knowing your pieces and parts. I just cannot emphasize that enough. Um, that and knowing what page to go to while you're looking at it. And that goes back to, I know I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here. We'll give you the uh, different wire numbers and you can just go from point A to point B. There's your, there's your rung numbers and it tells you what page this particular one is on. So if I click on that, it'll pull up for me on the software it'll pull up um, the different pages that all of those wires are on i wanted to do this and i've been wanting to do it for a long time but i just i wasn't sure of how to do it so i figured the best way is for me to just dive into it show you everything that's going on um, i know it's confusing i know it's not uh, down to the gnat's ass with explanations of everything yet but the only way to do it and keep it at a um, learnable and under I should say an understandable um, process and system is to do it page by page so it, you know in future videos I may take this section here and just go you know through all of this here and you know that in itself could be you know a 10-15 minute video so little at a time we'll learn it once again um if you want to put in uh some questions down below let me know what uh, you struggle with what you'd really like to know more about i'm not going to go into the actual uh, plcs and how to program them and all that within this series but uh, i can get into the the different fuses and every time I look at something, I come up with a different idea here. It's like, what kind of fuses do you put in here? Do you put in FLNRs? Do you put in, you know, RTK fives? You know, what do you do? And it's all part of the process. And the process is going to take quite a while to learn. I've been uh, been doing these, uh, doing the uh, control wiring and everything for a little over ten years now, and I've basically just learned it all on my own. So with that, I know this has been a really long video and I really appreciate you watching. And uh, don't forget to, to hit the bell, subscribe, let me know what you wanna see and we'll keep going and move on to the individual pieces and parts and make this happen for you. Thanks for watching, have a great day.